Okay, in last in our last lecture, we introduced covalent bonding and the concept of how elements come together and form molecular compounds. So, in in essence, this is uh, concept is molecular bonding. And in molecular bonding, uh, in contrast to uh, formation of ionic compounds, elements combined by the overlap and sharing of electrons. So a molecular bond my definition is the overlap and of, of bonding orbitals. and sharing of electrons. Molecular bonds are divided into what we call first order, second order, third order bonds. There's no fourth order bond. What that translates to is a single bond, double bond, a triple bond in the terminology issue. So a first order covalent bond is simply a single bond. And if we look at a single bond, any single covalent bond is always what we call an electron bonded pair, I, I call them. A bonded pair means they're holding two nuclei uh, in close proximity. And it's represented here either by the dots or bar. And it's a single bond. And you have single bonds forming between a number of different elements that uh, can make up substances. All right, second order covalent bond. It's a double bond. And when we get to molecular geometry, you'll see the kind of the electron orbital shapes of how this comes together. Uh, and it has two bonded pairs. And can be represented, say, by this notation or like that, representing the combination of two or the interaction of two electron clouds. And a third order covalent bond is a triple bond. And of course, three bonded pairs. So in the notation and the and construction of what we call dot structures and uh, two-dimensional structural formulas, we'll be using the bar or uh, electron pairs. Now there's one other notation and before we get into the uh, Lewis dot structures. Some elements carry what is known as non-bonded electrons, non-bonded pairs of electrons. This will be a filling of the octet associated with a given nucleus uh, during bonding. So if we have, uh, I want you to look at this and see if you can, uh, hopefully this makes sense. Carbon, and then you go to nitrogen, oxygen, and say fluorine, and well, we'll go ahead and put neon at the end of it. Now, if we put the valence electrons in each one of these, uh, we'll find that carbon has four valence electrons, 
uh, nitrogen has five and I'm going to pair them out like this. Oxygen has six. Fluoride has seven. Like that. And of course, neon has eight. It's a full octet. Now, according to the <coughs> octet rule, elements gain or lose electrons by the path of least resistance to achieve a noble gas configuration. Okay, and for the most part of what we're talking about today in molecular bonding, we're talking about molecular compounds, and you recall, what's the definition, I mean composition, molecular compound, two or more non-metals. So we're going to be working exclusively on the uh, right side of the chart today, and we're in here. So all of these have small radii, strong electron affinities, and they're going to be gaining electrons, and they're going to be bonding together because of that gain of electrons and sharing electrons. Now, what this is indicating is that uh, there are one, two, three, four bond sites. And the fact that if I were to completely saturate the uh, valence shell, that means uh, add an electron to every bond site. And I'd use X just to indicate, uh, put it on the other side like that, you would see no non-bonded pairs. So what do you conclude about carbon? Carbon always completely bonds out, whether it's a single, double, or triple bond, and never carries any uh, non-bonded pairs, if neutral. Carbon never carries non-bonded pairs, if neutral. And I'll show you, once we yank, in some cases, we can yank a, uh, a substrate off of the carbon and it'll leave a pair of electrons. Well, the, it'll be a formal charge there. Well, that's not what we're talking about in terms of the final neutral structure. A neutral structure does not carry uh, non-bond electrons. But nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine do, in fact, have non-bonded electrons. Here we have uh, five and to get to eight, you're at five and need to get to eight, that means you have three more uh, bond sites. And so it can only pick up three substrates. Now these substrates that you put on there can be double or even triple bonds, but they, only three of them can bond out. And each, each nitrogen in here will have a single uh, non-bonded pair. I, I don't call them a non-bonded pair. Um, I want to give you an example of this. I, uh, say you have this ammonia like that, and you would have a non-bonded pair. You have three bonded pairs and one non-bonded pair in the context of it. And each bar represents two electrons, and plus those two is eight, and so we conform to the octet rule. Oxygen has six, and you need two to get to the octet, so that means it only has two bond sites. Whether it's double bond uh, or whatever, it is only two things can hook up here. Right here. So oxygen hooked up with hydrogen makes you H2O, but it's also going to carry two non-bonded pairs in there. Why? Because it's going to conform to the octet. And finally, uh, fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, and all of them do the same thing, can pick up, have seven to pick up one, one bond site. So it has one bond, bonded pair, and three non-bonded pairs, something like H uh, fluoride. So this kind of gives you a, a little perspective, hopefully, and where we're going in terms of filling up a given element in a structure. For example, we were, we're about to do this, okay, uh, draw the Lewis dot structure for uh, methanol. Okay, and the calculation that you're going to do and the little procedure you're going to do is going to lead you to three, four, five covalent bonds in this molecule, okay? And so one, two, three, four, and then oxygen, five. And I'll show you that in a minute. 
each. The carbon conforms to the octet rule, because you can see, and these are shared bonds, okay? So uh, each hydrogen should have two electrons as you move around. Carbon should have four electrons in the cir big circle here. This hydrogen has two electrons. But if you looked at the oxygen in here, right there, you only have two bars, meaning four electrons. Well, to complete the octet, you simply come in here and put your non-bonded pair that would conform to this idea here. And so this is what some elements do. A nitrogen carry one non-bonded pair. It has five valence electrons, needing three. So it's gonna bond out three of them. So you're gonna only have two electrons left over, one non-bonded pair. Oxygen has six electrons. It only needs two to get to the octet. And so it would have two bonds and two non-bonded pairs like we have in water or air. And fluoride only has one bonded pair but three non-bonded pairs. And so understanding the uh, electron structure of the substance is very important and you understanding how to put the molecules together. This topic is writing or drawing Lewis dot structures. And the procedure I'm going to take you through is something I developed many years ago and has worked quite well over the many, many years that I've been teaching this. And it's called the AVO Beck method of Lewis structures. A V O B E C is an acronym, AVO Beck. And it the, the letters stand for arrange, and I'll explain each one. Valence. Valence number, octet number, bond number, enter electrons, and place them into the structure, and check octet. And in the case of hydrogen, it's a duet, so it is every element will fill to an octet that we're going to be working with, except hydrogen, and it fills to the duet. Hopefully you understand. Now, what I mean by arranging the elements, if you're given a formula, CH4, and asked to draw out the um, Lewis dot structure for that, you need to have some idea of how to put it together. So typically you would lay out this would be the correct one. But you don't know that until you get down to the last step down here. This means check your octet. If it conforms to the octet, yeah, that's a possibility of a molecule. And you can have uh, a, mole a formula that you can write two different molecules, okay? And it, it, they will be both be correct. To determine what it really is in terms of testing, you'd have to go to an instrumental method to test the molecule. Okay, this doesn't answer all the questions about the molecule. It just allows you to draw a two-dimensional diagram of what you what the uh, arrangement could be. Okay, so this is your two-dimensional. One of the things you can also do is H, uh, C, H, H, like this. Now this is an arrangement. Let me move it over a little bit so it won't look like it's H, H, C, H, H. And what would ultimately come out of this, say if you put your bonds in, one, two, three, four bonds in there, what's wrong with that? It doesn't conform with the octet rule. Yeah, you, this one does, but this one does not. You can't have four electrons around hydrogen, nor can you just have two, four electrons around carbon. It's gotta have eight. And same way over here, so when you check your, uh, octet duet possibilities. If it doesn't conform to the octet rule, 
then you exclude that. That is not real. However, when we put the bonds in here, we still have four bonds calculated. Then we can certainly check each of the elements, and they all conform to the octet rule or the duet rule for hydrogen. Like that. So that's what this is all about. So you're trying to find an arrangement that will conform to the octet rule. Now, some molecules are not quite as easy to lay out like this, and we'll play with some. Now, it's a trial error issue. I give you a formula, and you lay out as much as you can. You never find a hydrogen as an internal, uh, what they call a central element, and some of the things like that. Now, to save you time on test day, I'll tell you what it is. You'll calculate certain things from a structure, but to save us all time, I'll just give you the arrangement. The rest of it, you still have to do. Okay, the valence number is the total number of valence electrons. Now I'll show you how to deal with that. Like that. Now, once bonded, the, you calculate the octet rule. Octet number is the uh, total number of electrons after bonding. Now, this is not bonded pairs yet or non-bonded pairs. It's individual, total individual electrons. Now, to get the bond number, that would be the total number of covalent bonds or bonded pairs in the structure. And the bonded pair is octet minus valence number over two. Octet is O, V is valence number divided by two, and that gives you the number of covalent bonds in the molecule. Now we'll go through and run a few of these, and after working two or three, you'll find it's just repetition. And very easy to structure these, these things. Uh, here is, once you determine what the uh, number of bonds are, then you insert them into whatever your arrangement is right here. So this is uh, placing covalent bonds in the structure that you have created. And that's bonding pairs. You put bars, however many bars. And then check your octet, and that's kind of self-explanatory, as I've shown you down here. Okay, so arrangement. Arrange your elements. So we know that the, by experience, this is going to be the uh, two-dimensional arrangement. Hydrogens are always on the periphery of whatever molecule you structure. And you can have central elements can be any of those others. Now, we'll just leave it at that for right now, assuming we, we've got it. Valence number is the number of valence electrons. And I usually write it out like this, V number equals, and you list the number of elements you have. We have one carbon and four hydrogens in the molecule. There. From the periodic table, we see the carbon is in group four, right here, and so it has four for a valence number. Hydrogen in group one, it has one as a valence number. So we substitute those, one times four plus four times one, that gives us eight. That's your valence number, eight. All right, now the octet number, O number, if you will, is the total number of electrons associated with a bonded system, totally bonded system. Repeat your little formula up here, one carbon and four hydrogens. The number you put into for carbon and any other element on the periodic table in the molecular side is an eight. 
There's, it doesn't matter whether it's carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, sulfur, whatever. When you're calculating octet number, if that ain't nitrogen, I mean, if that ain't hydrogen, my bad. If that ain't hydrogen, you put an eight. There, you know, it's eight or two. So it's gonna be one times eight plus hydrogen is the only one that you'll put a two in. Now that's four. So everything conforms to the octet rule except hydrogen, which is two. And so when I add this together, I have 16. That's your octet number when you put it all together. Now, from this you can get the bond number or the number of covalent bonds. Which also means the number of bonded pairs. Of electrons, right? Okay, so it's the bond number is what you're ultimately after to find out how many covalent bonds are in the structure is octet minus valence over two. And so the octet number is 16, the valence number is eight, and that is divided by two. Of course, that's eight divided by two or four total covalent bonds. Now, then you enter your electrons, enter bonds or however you want to uh, support that. And so since I have four covalent bonds, I have to find space up here in that structure for four bonds. So I see one here and one here, one here, and one here. Okay, so I found a place for all of the bonds. But does that mean it's correct? You don't know until you check your octet, which is the last step. or do it to ensure that you do have, in fact, the proper number of bars. Okay, or number. Each bar is two electrons, so there's one, and there's that one, and then there's that one, and that one. So hydrogen in each of those cases has a couple of electrons, so that's satisfying. And so here, in the middle, we check those bars, and yes, carbon, in fact, has eight electrons. Now, we know that's going to be true. Okay, methane has that structure. But if you have something more complicated, it may or may not be the molecule that you, you're you know, drawing out. Uh, you have to go to another step in instrumental analysis or some other identification, uh, infrared spectra, UV, whatever. But whatever you draw conforms to the octet rule. Now, hear me. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It just may not be the molecule you think it is. I'll give you an example. Here's a formula, C2H6O. And you've run it through, you've gotten your sample and you ran it through a mass spectroscopy uh, instrument and you've come up with uh, two parts carbon, six parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. So you know, you got the printout from your machine and it says, ah, this way. Now what does it look like? What kind of structure does it have? And all this kind of stuff. Well, it's a trial and error thing. Now, I'm going to give you the two possibilities. You don't know which one it is until you test it somewhere else. But at least we have two molecules that are possible. Okay, so here is an arrangement that, uh, leave the bonds off of it. Okay, so there we have possibilities. And we can draw another one in here and scatter the hydrogens and oxygens around, and uh, I'm just saving us time. Believe me, these two will work, okay? So this is your arrangement. Uh, your valence number, okay, so we have two carbons, uh, one oxygen, and one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, six hydrogens. And carbon has a valence of four. Oxygen has a valence of six. Hydrogen has a valence of one. So eight and 12. Okay. 
I had to check it. So your valence number is 20 in that molecule. Octet number, you repeat the procedure or equation of the number of elements. But this time it's everything's an eight except hydrogen and you put in a two. So carbon is two times eight. Oxygen is one times eight. And then you have six hydrogens each carrying two. It means 24, 34, 35, 36 is your octet number. Now you apply the bond number, octet minus valence over two, and that's 36 minus 20 over two, and so that's 16 over two, or eight covalent bonds in that molecule. That's how much you have. So we apply and enter the electron bonded pairs. That's what this eight uh, uh, covalence bond refers to. These are bonded pairs. They're not free pairs. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that fits. Oh, nice, okay. But I come over here and look at this structure and this arrangement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, also eight. So which one is it? You don't know. And, and, and at this point, you, it doesn't matter. Both of those are legal m arrangements, okay? Because they all conform to the octet rule except for oxygens. And then what do you do with that? You just come in here and put your non-bonded pairs in, so that conforms all of the elements to the octet rule. Remember, oxygen can, has six out of shell electrons valence, has two bond sites, and those, so those are satisfied, those two bond sites. But you have to conform to the octet rule by putting in your non-bonded pairs, right, right here. This molecule is ethyl alcohol, or ethanol. This one is dimethyl ether. Now, once you, if you just had the formula only after doing some uh, elemental analysis and you have instruments which you can inject in uh, substance and it'll tell you how much carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, whatever else is with it uh, into the structure and uh, you can draw out all the molecules, maybe have 10 or 12 possibilities. But to determine which one exactly is, you have to go to another instrumental method maybe infrared spectroscopy or UV analysis or uh, ion absorption spectra or, you know, whatever, and some other instrumental analysis. Now, you won't have to deal with that on the exam day. You just have to deal with uh, something like this, one possibility, and that'll be fine. Turn, I'll give you a formula. How many bond, covalent bonds does this formula have? Well, you go through the ABO, the VOB right here, and you got your number and answer. So that's... That's the size of it. Uh, entering the electrons, we did that, and we checked the octet, so you know, those are still in there, but I'm not writing them. A lot of molecules that have multiple bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, and things of that nature, and see how we handle that. Is CH2O. Okay, so we start out by arranging everything, and I'm going to make up a H. C H O. I'm gonna just throw it in there just like that. I think you already know it's not going to conform. I'm just doing that as an example of well, this ain't gonna work. And we'll show you in a minute. And then here's another one, H. And on each side I'm gonna put the oxygen right up here. This one will work, right? That one works. So uh, we go through our routine of we got an arrangement, so we need to get the valence number, octet number, and the number of bonds, and insert the bonds, and then complete the octets on, on this. So your valence is one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. Carbon is still a four. Most of what we're working on is hydrocarbons. See, when you have a carbon-hydrogen combination, organic chemistry type stuff, um, we'll work on some non some polyions in a few minutes, non-organic 
hydrogen's one and one oxygen, and that's six, 12 for the valence number. Everybody still with? Very straight up stuff, not complicated. The octet number is everybody's eight except hydrogen and it's two. We repeat our little formula from the formula, molecular formula, write out the numbers of elements. And so we have one times eight for carbon, two times two for the hydrogen, and one times eight for the oxygen, and then we add them up and get the octet number. So here, eight, eight, 16, 7, 8, 9, 20. Okay, we good? Okay, now the bond number is simply the octet number minus the valence number over two, that's 20 minus 12, simply over two, and that's uh, eight over two, which gives us four covalent bonds. Now, we want to put our covalent bonds into our arrangement. So here I'm gonna put in my four. Uh, one, two, three. Well, I got an extra one. Right, well, I'll just put that one right here. So I got four bonds. We're talking about multiple bonds anyway. Okay, and see if it works out. Right. And then we come over here and put a four in here. Here's one, two, three, and I'm gonna put the other one right there. Okay, just for make things fit. Okay, now we've entered our bonds, and then we enter our electron pairs so that it fits the octet group. Well, yeah, I can make that fit an octet, and I can make this fit an octet, but hydrogen, well, I'll go ahead and make it fit an octet, okay? Yeah, no, this is ludicrous right here. I think everybody can tell that is absolutely wrong. Hydrogen, first of all, does not have a valence electron, so that part's all out of whack. Yeah, carbon could carry uh, eight electrons in its valence, but it never has free pairs like that, a neutral element. Uh, here's a hydrogen, here's an octet. Now, hydrogen only has two, so we can't use that. Uh, well, that's true. We got double bond and a couple of that, so that's, that is true, but the rest of them, no. I see the point. You, you might have an arrangement, but until you verify the arrangement conforms to the octet rule, uh, you not you can't say that that's the structure. And this one, uh, I've got a correct structure here for hydrogen. One, two, four, six, eight. So carbon's good. Hydrogen's good. Here's only four, but I do know I can come in here with non-bonded pairs on that oxygen, and then that will work. Remember. Carbon doesn't carry no um, pair, no free pairs. Nitrogen, one free pair. Oxygen, two, and halogens, fluorochloride, bromide, and iodine, three free pairs, and one bond. So this is our, our uh, molecule, and this is uh, formaldehyde. The formaldehyde picture. Now, when we're putting in the bonds, what other thing did I need to take into consideration? I had one, two, three to start with, but with an extra bond, I have to find a place to put it. Okay, well, hydrogen never carries a double bond. And that's kind of, you, if you put a double bond in there between carbon and hydrogen, hydrogen would have four valence electrons. Well, that doesn't fit for hydrogen. So the only place I could put the thing is where it would fit, okay? Now, you may have two places in a given structure layout that don't fit. Put it in there. You don't know that that's the right, as long as it fits, it's great. Okay, then you'd have to go take your sample to another machine and find out, well, which of the ones that fit is the true structure. Okay. Uh, another multiple bond one, uh, C2H2, right there. Okay, so we have a valence number is our, well, we're gonna arrange it, okay? at the end. Valence number is two carbons and two hydrogens, which is equal to two times four plus two times one, giving us 10. Octet number is two carbons, two hydrogens, which gives us two times eight plus two times two and 20. So our number of covalent bonds 
octet minus valence over 2 is 20 minus 10 over 2, 10 over 2 are 5 covalent bonds. See, it's getting real re repetitive. And we'll have another formula type kind of thing like this when we get to geometry where we have to determine the number of non-bonded pairs. But at any rate, uh, five covalent bonds. So how do I put these in? Well, here, 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 and here. Trust me, I'm saving us time here. Uh, you could put hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, you know, and all this, and you'd find out it didn't conform to the octet rule, so you'd throw it out anyway. But here I've got five covalent bonds I have to stuff in there. Here's one, two, three. I got two more to go. Hydrogen never carries a double bond. So there's only one other place to put it. And that's right here. So this is an example of a triple bond. It's called acetylene. Okay. Now the object here is to draw molecules with uh, electron pairs hanging out or whatever structures you're hanging out. Why? Because when you get it to this position, not in, see there's the molecular formula. Well you can't tell anything about the chemistry there. But when I look at this molecule with a triple bond, I know from experience, and you will learn in the future, uh, that a triple bond is very, very reactive first of all. And we learned last class that the more bonds you have between elements, the stronger that bond. So if I compared a single bond to a double bond, like up here, the double bond's much stronger than single bonds, triple bonds much long, stronger than even double bonds. If you look on the energy chart that uh, you I get handed out, you'll see the bottom of that little handout. The bond numbers, uh, bonding energy numbers, the triple bond, 835, write them down there, here we go. A carbon, hydrogen, carbon double, and a carbon triple bond here. See, a carbon single bond is 411 kilojoules per mole. A double bond on the chart is 602 kilojoules per mole. And the triple bond is 835. And I got it off that handout that I gave you with a little table of numbers. Everybody remember that? Okay, I guess fine. Okay, the bigger the number, that means it gives off more energy. The more energy it gives off, the tighter it holds together. So if you get level 800, that's stronger than 600, which is stronger than. So, just a little sidebar there for strength of bond. Okay. Okay, so we'll get an arrangement at the end. You know what ammonia looks like. We, well, we make it here, 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 and here. So I have to put in bonds and non-bonded pairs and stuff like that to fill up my octet duets and so forth. Okay, the valence is, well, we got one nitrogen and three Hydrogen, see how this is really getting repetitions very straight up stuff. Your octet number, I just go ahead and put that down just to, because that's where I'm going, and my bond number is octet minus valence over two. So all I gotta do is fill in the blanks now, so to speak. So this is a five valence, it's group five in the periodic table. And hydrogen group one, so it has a one valence, and that gives me a valence number of eight. Octets fills at eight with nitrogen and two with uh, hydrogen and six, 14, yeah. And so it would be 14 minus eight over two, six over two or three covalent bonds. So when working with the ammonia molecule or around the nitrogen, you can expect three covalent bonds. Now nitrogen can carry double bonds, okay? Nitrogen, carbon, and it, it, it works. So um, I might try something like that. I'll throw you up one. Now the, to fill the octet, of course, we gotta have that, okay, right there. 
How about that? See if you can put that that one together. It contains a double bond in it. Also, okay. So I'll use that up. So you can, if you need to keep an eye on it, uh, valence number is one carbon um, and three hydrogens, uh, one nitrogen and one oxygen, and that is one times four. Three times one, one times five, plus one times six. Okay, I got 18. Okay, y'all agree? All right. Okay, so our octet number is repeated, but fill up eight and two. <coughs> this up a little bit get a little more room okay 30 okay okay well the number of covalent bonds is still octet minus valence over 2 so 30 minus 18 over 2 12 over 2 so we have six covalent bonds Right there. So I need to make an arrangement out of this. So I'm going to give it to you. There you go. So I'm going to put all six in here. I'm going to see make better age. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, where does the next one go? Hypothetically, let's say I put it in here and fill up the octet. Well, that, that'll work against uh, for nitrogen, but will that work for oxygen? Does oxygen carry three non-bonded pairs? That's the question. It only has six bond sites. Remember, it's group six. So it has to have two bonds. Then you fill out with octets. Does that make sense? Everybody kind of catching that? So this would not be correct right here because I can't carry two non-bonded pairs at the oxygen in this concept. So the corrected structure would be this. You would have to put your double bond here and only two bond pairs and one bond pair with nitrogen. And so that would conform. Okay? That's a methyl nitrile. Or whatever. I don't know. We're not making new stuff or inventing stuff. I'm just trying to show you how to put stuff. A complex substrate as a valence number of two. That's all. Just like hydrogen. What is a complex substrate? It's a complex arrangement of elements that is bonded to a central element that is central to the molecule you're trying to draw. Well, that may sound like double talk, but it would do something like this. Here is a benzene, or phenyl groups, what we call them. See, draw a six ring, six sided ring, and that's attached to a carbon. like that. This is called toluene. That's the chemical name for it. But what this is on the end here is a phenyl group. 
right here. It's called a phenyl group out there. Well, fundamentally, you're not going to need to do a AVO back for that phenyl group. What will be given to you is something like this, C6H5, you'll put a parenthesis, bar around CH3. Now, I'll give you that. And you'll be saying, well, that's a complex structure. Whether you know it or not, the complex structure will be parenthesis off to the side in the formula. And so this is the complex structure. Now, it's called a phenyl group, okay. If some people know it, but if you don't, that's all right. But you do need to know when you look at something that's given to you and something's over there on the side as a parenthesis like that, that means parenthesis would have just one of whatever this is attached to carbon and three hydrogens, however it's arranged. Now, it, now this is a simple form. It could have several other elements that you do include in the uh, arrangement. I could do this. Let's let's do that then. Uh, let's go C two H five. Okay, so you have to take the carbon out a little further in the structure. Now, the complex structure is a valence number of two. Now, the valence number for carbon is eight and the valence number for hydrogen is one. And that's how you approach it when you calculate your valence number. It's one C6H5, parentheses, or if I could knock off one of the hydrogen, put two of them in there. Okay, so that's one complex structure, whatever it is. And then you have two carbons and five hydrogens. Now the hydrogens at the end carbons plus five hydrogens out here like that so all you're doing is isolating the complex group but these hydrogens you have to apply in the AVO back but this is applied as a group in the AVO back and so like I said is two so your valence number is one times two plus two times four plus five times uh, one and so eight 15. And did I get that? 2 and 4 is 8. Did I get the right numbers in here? Not a 2 is 1. The valence number of the complex is like hydrogen. It has a 1. When it bonds, you go to 2. My bad. i got a quick brain in here, full mouth in motion. So, uh, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So your valence number is 14. Everybody catch that. I'm running off here in one direction, my mouth, and my brain's going another. So it should be a valence number of 1. Check that. Instead of V equals 2, you put V equals 1. But you do, uh, for your octet number, do jump it up to 2. Now, we can put a 2 and an 8. How did I know that I was incorrect up here? It always comes out even in that one. You have to come out even or you won't, or you won't get an even split. Uh, so 10, 26, 28. Okay, so now we can go our bond number, octet minus valence over 2, terrible B. Okay, so I have 28 minus 14 over 2, and so that is 12 over 2. So now I have uh, six covalent bonds for that molecule right there. And so it's just a case of lining everything up. C6H5 would be bonded magic. Okay, so seven covalent bonds, so we start throwing things together, and I've got 
two carbons uh, and five hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five. So the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're right, seven. Okay, that's the point. So in this complex structure here on the side is you don't have to go through it in terms of calculating all the ABO back with that, that structure. Uh, because I will give you the formula in that context and you see that thing sitting off to the side. So, oh, okay, that's a valence of one and an octet of two. So it's just treated like a hydrogen in the sequence of everything. Polyions are molecules that are, have a formal charge attached to them. A formal charge means a full plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two type of charge. Uh, ammonia, ammonium carries a plus one charge. That's the net charge on that polyion. NO3 minus one is the net overall charge. And we'll be talking about how to calculate individual charges, uh, what we call formal charges of the element uh, in a little while. So hopefully we'll get to it today. Uh, SO4, 2 minus, uh, PO4, 3 minus, I'm trying to think of another one, um, that one. Hydronium ion, H3O plus 4 acid. So we'll do those to see what happens, okay? Now, when we talk about cations, how did the structure acquire a positive charge? Oxidation or loss of electrons. So when you see a structure given like this with a plus on it, it simply means that you have an excess of protons relative to the number of electrons. Now you're not gonna be worrying too much about that, but you do need to know that this is a result of losing electrons. So when you calculate your valence number, you subtract an electron from the valence number. On the anions, the negative means that it has a surplus of electrons versus the number of protons. So when you do your valence number on the anions, you add an electron if it's a minus one, or you add two electrons if it's a minus two. And we'll do them, show you the both of them. Okay, let's start out with the NH4 plus. Now plus, we're going to subtract one electron from the valence number. So the valence number is nitrogen, four hydrogens minus one electron, minus one, okay? And so that is equal to a five, one times five, plus four times one minus one, and that's eight, okay? You lost an electron here and achieved the positive charge. The octet number, you do not add or subtract anything. Do it the same way you've always done. Same procedure, no changes in the procedure. So it's a nitrogen, four hydrogens, and that's it. So you have a five plus four, I mean eight, excuse me, plus four times two, and that's 16. And bond number is octet minus valence over two. 16 minus 18 is eight divided by two, and so that molecule has four covalent bonds. So when we draw out the NH4, we want to show four covalent bonds. Now, the convention when working with polyions in the structural form, you put a bracket around it, and you put the formal charge as a superscript on here to indicate indicate that's a net charge over the sum of all the individual charges. Each one of those you can calculate an individual charge, okay? And then you add up those algebraically and it shows up as a uh, plus one overall. 
Okay. Uh, in 03, we'll do that one, and you'll see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, minus 1 is what we want. Valence number is nitrogen plus 3 oxygens, okay, plus 1 electron because it gained 1 electron above the number of protons. And so nitrogen is 1 times 5 plus 3 times 6 plus 1 electron gained and 24. The octet number is uh, nitrogen plus 3 oxygen. Do not add or subtract anything at the octet level. Okay, so this is 8 plus 3 times 8 and 32. And so our bond number is octet valence 2 32 minus 24 over 2, uh, 8 over 2, that gives you 4 covalent bond. Okay, like that. So this one, you only have three elements to deal with in this one. This has a property known as resonance. In other words, we put two bonds in here and here, so we need uh, two more, so we put here and here, like that. You can have it like that. That conforms, that conform. that does not conform. Like that, I'm sorry. I gotta put one there and fill up the extra one there. This has a charge on it, so you can get away with this. So this extra pair right here on the oxygen accounts for the extra electrons Right here, this electro electron pair. Aren't, aren't there three oxygens? I'll show you. Yeah, we gotta put that right there. That electron. This is a resonance structure right here. This bond right there will alternate back and forth between those structures. That's not a part of this issue. But this is a correct arrangement. And ions can do that. Okay? This would be have a formal charge here and then something would bond right there, like a hydrogen making nitrous acid or something of that nature, HNO2. So that, just go with me right now on that because that's more than what we need to do right, right now. Okay, sulfate. I want to get these last two and then we'll take a break. Uh, SO42 minus here. Okay, so your valence is sulfur plus four oxygens plus two electrons, since we gained two electrons. And so that would be a six plus four times six plus two and 32 valence electrons involved in the structure. Octet number, sulfur plus four oxygen plus, uh, no, as far as you go. And so that's eight plus four times eight and that's 40. And number of covalent bonds is octet minus valence over two again, 40 minus 32 over two. And so we have eight uh, over two or four covalent bonds. Now again, you can have more non-bonded pairs in this structure than uh, would appear normal. So if sulfur, is a central element, and what you look at is, well, how, how do I arrange four uh, oxygens against one sulfur? Well, there's only really one way to do that, and that's put them around in that configuration there. And we've got four covalent bonds, so I'll go one, two, three, four, and I'll finish the octets for each of the oxygens with non-bonded pairs, and this is legal in polyions. We'll learn in the next chapter, sulfur can carry six covalent bonds. It's not in this case. This is, this is a departure from the octet rule, but I'm writing it exclusively as an octet configuration. So we'll show you later.
something like that. Finally, the uh, so we have to arrange uh, three hydrogen bonded to a central element oxygen and wind up with an extra uh, positive charge on it. Now, uh, that's the loss of electrons, so valence number is three hydrogens and one oxygen minus one electron, which ultimately would give us three times one plus one times six minus one, and six, seven, eight, nine, that's eight. We subtract one for valence numbers. Octet number is only three hydrogens and one oxygen. That's three times two plus one times eight. Uh, Fourteen. So the covalent bonds of B number, octet minus valence over two, fourteen minus eight over two, six over two are three covalent bonds. So I could arrange my hydrogens in this configuration in one, two, three, so I have most of it done. Hydrogen satisfied all around, oxygen not. And I can come in here to satisfy that with a non-bonded pair. Actually what happens is the proton absorbs one of the non-bonded uh, non pairs from just the uh, oxygen in pure water, neutral water. And so that's what accounts for the cationic charge on that. Any questions? It's very straightforward, and you will have the proper arrangement. My questions will revolve around uh, how many, what's the valence number of this molecule, what's the octet, how many covalent bonds, those kind of questions. And um, as far as drawing all the things out, probably not, okay?